Mr. Posey. Uh, thank you, Madam Chair, and thank you for uh, holding this hearing today, and I thank our witnesses for attending. It's been a, a great walk down memory lane. Uh, it's great to see uh, an unusually high number of young people in the audience today, what I would consider young anyway, and, and uh, uh, I can remember being not much younger than most of them, sitting in class when the big news of the day was uh, President Kennedy's speech at Rice University, why go to the moon? Uh, great countries uh, do things, he said, not because they're easy, but because they're hard. And, and uh, it inspired me and so many others in my generation. Uh, he was an inspirational uh, president for sure. And, and I remember sitting at the desk in school and my fear, hey, you know, within 10 years, I want to put my fingerprints on the rocket that carries the first human beings to the moon. And that was a prime goal for me as a young man. And, and about five years later, uh, uh, you left off McDonnell Douglas, Mr. Ranking Member, as a, as a big contributor to that space program. I was an inspector on the third stage of the Apollo rocket as uh, working for McDonnell Douglas. And uh, <clears throat> I have to tell you that um, most of the people that worked on that program at, at, at the Space Center uh, would have done the job for free. They were thrilled to get paid for it. But it was a time uh, not only to advance the greatest technological achievement in the history of mankind, uh, but it was a time when Americans were united. And uh, as you've all pointed out, they were all united uh, behind the program. And uh, people around the world uh, respected us and were united with us for that. It was the days that some referred to as the Camelot era where you respected the president even if you didn't vote for him. And so many of those times have passed, and, and I'm concerned, like many of the others that have spoken about this before me, about their experiences, about the legacy for the young people uh, that are going to follow us. Uh, we know that you know, space is important uh, to our economy, our economic well-being. We know it's important to our technologi technological advancement. We know it's important to our national security, national defense. It's the ultimate military high ground. And, and I think we all know from hearings we've had here before, ultimately it's responsible for the survival of our species. And so my question uh, to the members of the panel is how you feel uh, we can best continue uh, the space legacy that was put forth with Apollo and inspire future young people and future generations of young people uh, to follow. I think one thing when you talk to space entrepreneurs at, at all levels, people who are actually starting to work in space, it's possible that there's not a great framework in place yet for those folks to do their work. And so maybe um, one thing Congress could be thinking about is if we're going to have a space economy and if there's going to be a lot of operators in the space economy, as there is, for instance, in the digital economy today, maybe there should be a framework in which they have a real sense of security and predictability about what the rules are, who can do what, that kind of thing. I'm not sure that framework has been updated really very much since the, the era of Apollo. They, they signed a, a, a really important international treaty in the mid-60s so that as, as the Soviet Union and the Americans raced for the moon, we were clear what was going to happen there. We weren't claiming the moon, we were visiting the moon. And so when you, when you talk to the folks who are doing this work now, there's, there's a little trickle of curiosity and nervousness, not about their own work, but about the framework in which they're operating. And so it might be worth thinking about if we're going to have a vigorous space economy 10 years from now, what do we need to put in place now to make that possible and also secure? Yeah, it's, it's, it's so much a matter of, of dollars, obviously. And, and someone mentioned earlier so many unfulfilled missions. We've had over two dozen missions to nowhere, over $24 billion that never reached fruition. Uh, funding is a big problem. We use 4% of GDP back in the days of Apollo. Now it's less than one half of 1%. And, and the mission changes from 
presidential administration to Congress to Congress to Congress. I uh, wish I had more time. Thank you, Madam Chair. I yield back.